for Arkansas PBS, I'm Michael Heblin with KUAR FM 89.1 in Little Rock. It looks like a proposal to speed up the implementation of tax cuts in Arkansas is heading for final votes in the State House and Senate. On Wednesday, the second day of a special session, both chambers gave initial approval to identical bills. Governor Asa Hutchinson had called the session to consider how to spend a $1.6 billion budget surplus. Late Wednesday afternoon, the Republican issued a statement calling it, quote, a good day for the taxpayers of Arkansas with the passage of the $500 million tax relief bills in both the House and Senate. Hutchinson went on to say it could not come at a better time with the continued challenge of high food and gas prices. But Democrats argued it won't help most Arkansans and could jeopardize federal COVID-19 relief funding from the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA. Senate Minority Leader Keith Ingram of West Memphis voted for the tax cut plan last year, but said he disagrees with the current push to accelerate it. Why would we risk losing eight or nine hundred million dollars in ARPA funds that will be used to fix infrastructure problems that we've struggled with for years? That nine hundred million dollars can go a long way in providing broadband for the rest of this state and rural Arkansas that doesn't have it. In the House, Republican Representative Joe Jett, the bill sponsor, quoted U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in saying those concerns are unfounded. Nothing in the act prevents states from enacting a broad variety of tax cuts. That is, the act does not deny states the ability to cut taxes in any manner whatsoever. It simply provides that funding received under the act may not be used to offset a reduction in tax revenue. If states lowered certain taxes but do not use the funds under the act to offset those cuts, for example, by replacing lost revenue through other means, the tax mandate is not implicated. Arkansas joined other states as a plaintiff in a lawsuit aimed at stopping the federal government from rescinding COVID funds used for tax cuts. Senator Jonathan Desmang, a Republican of BB, said he's confident funding will not be rescinded because the cuts aren't being funded directly or indirectly by relief money. In terms of the economic impact, Representative Andrew Collins, a Democrat of Little Rock, argued lowering the top marginal income tax rate to 4.9 percent would have a negative effect on the state's economy. It will increase inflation because we're pumping more money into the economy, same as the stimulus. It's a stimulus mostly for the rich. And it sends a message to our constituents who are crying out to pay our teachers that instead we care more about tax cuts for the wealthy. With Republicans in the majority, passage of tax cuts and funding for a school safety program are expected. Those were the items included in the governor's call for the session. Democratic lawmakers announced at a press conference Wednesday afternoon they are pushing to extend the session, which would require two-thirds support. They continue pushing for consideration of a bill to raise teacher salaries. Representative Megan Godfrey of Springdale said the issue should not be pushed off until next year's regular session because many educators are quickly leaving the profession. Our teachers are building a brighter Arkansas for all of us, and raising teacher pay is one of the best ways we can show our appreciation, improve recruitment and retention, and compete with the higher teacher salaries in surrounding states. Another more controversial bill Democrats would like considered would amend the state law that bans abortion except to save the life of the mother. Representative Nicole Clowney, a Democrat from Fayetteville, says not including exceptions for rape or incest puts Arkansas in conflict with the federal Medicaid rules, which could lead to the loss of billions of dollars. Senator Jason Rapert, 
a Republican from Conway, who has led the push to ban abortions, countered on Twitter Wednesday night that the state has not received notice of any such conflict and does not believe the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has the authority to take such action. For Arkansas PBS, I'm Michael Hiplin with Central Arkansas NPR station KUAR FM 89.1. You can read more online at KUAR.org.